You're watching Skylands, the local bird's eye view. My name is Bart, and I'll be your host and pilot in command for this mission. We have two things on the docket. First, we have a winner, Mr. Bob Shue, correctly identified white mana as the location of the last Guess Where I Am contest. You will get instructions on how to claim your free t-shirt in the comments of the YouTube section. Check out that in the next couple of days. This week, we return to the town of Wanakyu to tell the story of the Wanakyu Reservoir. So sit back, relax, put your headphones on, and enjoy the show. we visited Wanaku to tell the tale of Midvale and the train station. This time we will fill in some gaps and take you back in time to the formation of the Wanaku Reservoir. Enter the 1900s, a time where blacksmiths, tanneries, and mills stood throughout Ringwood Avenue. Ringwood's lakes were just Tice's Pond and Wanaku Reservoir was just the Wanaku River. Deep under the waters of the reservoir, the true history of Wanaku awaits. The construction of the reservoir started in the 1920s and took about 10 years to complete. Furnace Street in Wanaku ends in a dam on one end, but did you know that Furnace Street went further? Yep, Furnace Street led right to Rice and Freedom Furnace, which is now underwater. This furnace was used in the early iron production from the nearby mines. The Wanaku paper mill, remnants of the ancient iron furnace, Cemeteries, homesteads, and railroads were all either destroyed or submerged in the forming of the reservoir. That's right, many of the oldest graves found around town were moved from their original resting ground, which is now deep underwater. Fun fact, one cemetery still remains on the inaccessible Wanaku Reservoir lands. You can find the location on Google Maps. If you're interested in discovering more about the Monk Cemetery, check the link in the description below. Here is an old map showing the changes that took place once the Wanaku River was dammed to form the reservoir. Notice the original location of these four family cemeteries, Boards, Browns, Erskine, and Ryerson. Forming the reservoir took a toll, displacing 70 homes, two major employers, the DuPont factory and the paper mill, four cemeteries and 256 bodies were moved to create it. Speaking of moving bodies, did you know that the earliest settlers in the area were the Lene Lenape Native American tribe and their historical mentions of white settlers unknowingly moving Indian headstones from Indian burial grounds on the Meadowbrook Estates on Conklinton Town Road. Some of the earliest names of Dutch settlers were the Beams, Sloats, Van Dynes, Freelands and Lines. The Beams can be dated back somewhere in the early 1700s and lived around Chestnut Street. In fact, the Beam family grave markers still stand at the Midvale Cemetery. Hit the like button if you enjoy this episode. Support us by hitting the subscribe button. And until next week, Pilot in Command, signing off.